I'm Chris Hansen, right now on Crime Watch Daily from here in New York. He was the millionaire king of discount furniture in Jacksonville, Florida. Bye, America. Until Jose Lantigua mysteriously dropped dead. But his untimely demise is all part of a wicked game. And you really couldn't have made this up. The secrets and lies he took to the grave. At any point, are there any red flags going off? How he turned his own wife into a pawn. That's all a lie. You were duped. And I'm like, no. In the trail of clues that lead detectives to one final shocker. That's why I call it Dead Man Walking. Right now. Andrea Isom, sir, with Crime Watch yeah. Daily. Jason Mattel with Crime Watch Daily. This. I'm Elizabeth. I'm here with Crime Watch. I'm Michelle from Crime Watch Daily. Anna Garcia from Crime Watch. Is Crime Watch oh, Daily. Stay off my property. We'll find you again. We always do. Welcome to Crime Watch Daily, everyone. I'm Chris Hansen. We begin today with a Crime Watch Daily exclusive. The woman at the center of one of the wildest fraud cases I've ever seen is finally breaking her silence. Anna Garcia has the explosive new interview you will only see here. A millionaire CEO living large is suddenly dead. Getting him to describe his alleged activities would be like reading a Jason Bourne novel. But did wealthy and mysterious Jose Lantigua die a natural death? Or was this something more ominous? Sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. And you really couldn't have made this up. A fatal rare disease, international intrigue, and a family ensnared in a twisted tale of deception. You know, I'm so blessed. How did I get so lucky? Spun by a master storyteller. Yep, I thought it was like a fairy tale, and I was a princess. But as you're about to learn, her prince, Jose Lantigua, is really a dead man walking. Stand with us at Circle K. Bye, American. Everyone in Jacksonville, Florida, knew Lantigua's face the owner of discount furniture stores. His commercials for the Circle K chain even made him a local celebrity. America, we have a choice. We can save our country. And selling dining room tables and bedroom sets made Lantigua very rich. Would you say he was a millionaire? He told me he was. He said that he had millions. Crime Watch Daily sitting down with Lantigua's wife, Daphne, in an exclusive interview about the man she thought was her knight in shining armor. He was a really fascinating person, um, very kind, very thoughtful. Daphne Simpson is a deeply religious woman. Her first husband was a pastor, and like many singles, Daphne logged on for love, hoping to meet a nice guy through a Christian dating site. It wasn't long before a match was made in heaven with the successful Cuban immigrant turned furniture king. When I told the girls at work, you know, that I had gone out with this particular gentleman and they were like, oh my gosh, you know, he's so awesome. He's, you know, great person here in the community. He's contributed to so many, you know, charities and everything. Daphne, who's originally from Texas, moved to Jacksonville. And when she went back to the Lone Star State to visit her kids, they could tell she was smitten with her new Romeo. She was, I mean, just so giddy and telling me about this amazing man that she had ma uh, met and at how much she liked him. After four months of dating, Daphne's Cuban Casanova popped the question. It was in his usual grand style at a fancy restaurant with long stemmed red roses and champagne on ice waiting tableside. Sounds like a TV show, The Bachelorette, right? <laughs> I know, I was just like, whoa, it, it just blew me away. After dinner, Jose gets down on bended knee and out comes the only thing sweeter than chocolate covered strawberries, a five carat diamond engagement ring. That's a big ring. Yeah, it was. It was, like I said, very, wow. It was huge, very blingy. Was your mom in love with him? Oh, yeah, absolutely. She was, I would say, infatuated with him. 
And why wouldn't she be? Jose was divorced, his children grown adults. Daphne says he rolled out the red carpet for her own adult children, even inviting them to move into his mini mansion on exclusive Fleming Island, an upscale coastal community about 15 miles from Jacksonville. He brought all of us into his fold, my sisters, myself. Immediately he was like, you know, I want you guys to move here into Florida. Jose even dazzled Daphne and her kids with intriguing stories about his past as a high-ranking military officer. But he embellished those tales, saying he worked with the CIA carrying out top secret missions in South America. I was like, have you killed people before? What kind of operations did you do? So he would tell me in depth. Everyone's future looked bright, especially when Lantigua made Circle K a family business, giving the kids jobs. It was one big Brady Bunch in the making. It was like we were one beautiful, big, happy family. And the wedding was amazing too. Daphne and Jose surrounded by their eight kids at an intimate beachside affair. I had always wanted a beach wedding with family and a few friends. The pair honeymooned in North Carolina where they quickly snapped up a rustic mountain retreat. Beautiful views, I mean, it was gorgeous. He wanted to start renovating on it. And renovate they did. Jose even building, of all things, a panic room. Just like in the movies, a secret lair completely concealed to the naked eye. So he had this safe room built so that the family would be safe. We could all go up there if, you know, chaos broke out. Daphne was living a dream come true. The newly blended family enjoyed vacations, celebrated holidays together, and welcomed new grandchildren into the world. I mean, honestly, he sounds perfect. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought, wow. And he, you know, told me we're soulmates. But the dream of a marriage was about to become a nightmare. Daphne says just a few months later, Jose drops a shocker, telling her he's dying from a rare condition called CJD, better known as mad cow disease. So he told you he had mad cow disease? Yes. How did he go about explaining this? He has me in his arms and he says, I have something I have to tell you. I have CJD and I didn't even know what CJD was. And he explained that it was a brain disease and that there was no cure for it, nothing could be done, and that he had maybe six months to live. And I remember I started bawling because we'd only been married for a short time and now I think he's dying and that I'm only gonna have six more months with him. Daphne says Jose told her he contracted the disease while he was in the military and had to eat monkey brains while on assignment in the jungle. He said that one of the missions that they had gone on, he had to interact with the, the locals where he had been the guest of honor and therefore you had to eat what's given to you and he had eaten raw monkey brain at that time. You spoke with the doctor? Yes, I did. And what did the doctor tell you? That he had CJD and he would answer any questions I had. We went to an MRI clinic and he had an MRI done of his brain. Did he show you the MRI or any x-rays or anything? I did look at it, but I didn't know. I mean, it had a bunch of white spots everywhere, so I just assumed, you know, that's part of the disease. Daphne and Jose went to Miami, breaking the devastating news to their extended family members. But not long after they get home, Jose makes a completely different and even more shocking admission to Daphne. He sat me down and said, I have something to tell you. I needed to let you know that all that stuff I told you about the CJD was a lie. And I did it to protect the family. And I didn't want anybody to know what the real truth was to protect you. Suddenly, Jose writes up a dark second chapter in his story. Antigua tells his wife, Daphne, my background is catching up on me. Coming up, now Jose claims it's worse than Mad Cow. There is a great danger lurking for the family. As I told you, I was a special forces operations officer that actually took out and assassinated a cartel leader in South America. 
and I need to fake my death now. Otherwise, my life is at risk, and your life, and your family as well. And Jose needs everyone but Daphne to believe he would soon die in the jungles south of the border from a horrible disease. He was going to Venezuela from mad cow disease. At any point, are there any red flags going off? The story of successful businessman Jose Lantigua made headlines around the world, but you've never heard the story behind the story until now. Today, our Anna Garcia has an exclusive look at how Lantigua tried to fool the world. Jose Lantigua was considered the furniture king of Jacksonville, Florida, but he was about to lose his crown. He looked amazing and um, treated me like I was a princess. Daphne's Prince Charming was dying, he said, from mad cow disease. He explained that it was a brain disease and that there was no cure for it, no, nothing he could be done, and that he had maybe six months to live. But Jose's twisted tale of having mad cow had just one fatal flaw. It was all a load of bull. Daphne tells me Jose lied about his fatal disease for the wildest of reasons. Jose told her his past as a CIA special ops agent south of the border was dangerously haunting him. He claimed a Mexican drug cartel ordered a revenge hit and he needed to protect the family. I was terrified, but I didn't want my children's lives to be in danger. And I believed him because one, why would you lie about something like that to your wife? But as you're about to see, they were all tall tales. Daphne says she had no idea her husband was in debt up to his lying eyeballs. His seemingly successful Circle K furniture chain had been in the red for years. Do you believe that at one point in his life he really was successful and had a lot of money? I don't know. Um, again... That could be a lie too. Right. I don't know what Everything he told me, I don't know what's true anymore. It seems Jose owed the banks millions of dollars after taking out loans he couldn't repay. Instead of filing for bankruptcy, Assistant U.S. Attorney Mark Devereaux says Jose concocted an elaborate plan to rake in over $8 million in life insurance payouts. He thinks it's gonna, everything's gonna be better, just like the gambler. I'll win the next hand but it doesn't. And in order to get the insurance companies to cough up the cash, Jose had to fake his own death. So he closed up shop and told his family he was going to Venezuela for treatment, but he needed Daphne's help to pull off the plan. He needed a conspirator, a co-conspirator, and it ended up being his wife. But he knew his wife, and he knew that if he told her the truth, she wouldn't have jumped on board, so he tricked her. We've all heard there's no honor amongst thieves. Here, he had no honor, and he was very cruel in what he told his wife. To convince Daphne to help him, Lantigua whipped up a tale of death so outlandish it could be ripped from the pages of a spy novel. Lantigua tells his wife, Daphne, my background is catching up on me. As I told you, I was a special forces operations officer that actually took out and assassinated a cartel leader in South America. I was the team leader, and I need to fake my death now, otherwise my life is at risk, and your life, and your family as well. Meanwhile, Antigua had Daphne's kids hoodwinked into believing he was going to Venezuela for experimental treatment for mad cow disease. The crafty con man even wrote a personal letter to his kids preparing for his imminent death. He had left a letter in his personal effects for me to share with the family, stating that he didn't want to pass away in front of his family. He wanted to be alone so they would remember him as he was, before, you know, when he was still healthy. And wouldn't you know it, months after disappearing deep in the jungles of South America, Lantigua drops dead, or so he said. At any point, are there any red flags going off? Oh yeah, the whole time. I mean, when you don't see a body and then they just disappear, it's weird, you know, to just disappear and then die in a foreign country. But Lantigua moved pretty well for a dead guy. While in Venezuela, he ends up purchasing death certificate, 
has a doctor sign, he ends up also purchasing a certificate of cremation. Daphne is instructed to tell her kids that she's flying to Venezuela to collect his ashes. She boards the plane loaded with about $20,000 in cash. What was that money for? He had told me it was to, to get the, the records that they needed to show that he was dead. The couple goes to the U.S. Embassy in Venezuela to get a certificate of death, a document Daphne will need to get the $8 million in insurance. He's outside the embassy waiting for you. You're inside the American Embassy in Venezuela with his death certificate trying to get it approved. You know, wow, that really takes a lot of to pull off. Everything he did takes a lot. I don't know how you can do what he did and wake up every morning not hating yourself. At this point, Daphne claims she's just protecting the family and has no idea about her husband's plan to rip off the insurance companies. Antigua tells Daphne, Daphne, you have to do this. If you don't go through everything, it's gonna be clear to the cartel that I'm not dead. But back in Jacksonville, as the children are processing their stepdad's death, Daphne had become a pawn in her husband's wicked game. You come back with a death certificate, you come back with a box of something that could be dirt, but everyone's supposed to believe it's your husband's remains. And what do you do? Do you have a funeral? No, his son did a memorial service. He ends up having his wife do all the things that a grieving widow would do and it's all a sham. And shortly after the memorial service, Lantigua miraculously rose from the dead, telling Daphne to hire a lawyer to start the insurance claims on seven, that's right, seven policies. How many times do you have a situation where a person is so bold to use a federal court, a presidentially appointed judge, to basically unknowingly assist them in their fraud for eight million dollars. That takes some guts. Or stupidity. Stupid would be an understatement. Up next, something was rotten in Venezuela. That's why I call it dead man walking, because if he's walking, he ain't dead. And it wasn't the decomposing body of Jose Lantigua. Businessman Jose Lantigua had seven, yes, seven life insurance policies. So when he died from, of all things, mad cow disease, his family received quite the financial windfall. Except there was one tiny little problem. You see, Jose wasn't dead. Anna Garcia is back with our exclusive new investigation. From his secret hideaway in a South American jungle, Jose Lantigua did something probably no other person on the planet could do. He read his own obituary. I started bawling because we'd only been married for a short time. Jose Lantigua says he died, but he's the dead man talking. He says mad cow disease killed him, or so he wanted his life insurance company to believe. This is a very unique insurance fraud because in order to accomplish this and be a success, one has to cut their ties and basically be a lone wolf for the rest of their lives and say goodbye to their family and loved ones. And that's a hard thing to do, if not almost impossible. The feds say Jose faked his own death, paying off local Venezuelans to create a paper trail and even conning his wife Daphne into helping him pull off the scam. And how long did this lie go on for? Way too long, a long time. That was the hardest having to lie to my kids, my family, but I thought I was protecting them. Protecting them, she was led to think, from a Mexican drug lord with revenge on his mind. You think that's how he manipulated you? Oh, I'm sure. He knew how much family meant to me and how much I loved my children and my grandchildren. And what Daphne did next sounds like a plot out of a hit thriller. We then learn Daphne travels to the Bahamas on a carnival cruise line that leaves out of Jacksonville. It leaves here twice a week. She carried money. 
she met with Lantigua, and Daphne then returns back on the cruise ship. The Bahamas, how was that part of the plan? He had been telling me that he wanted me to come and see him in the Bahamas. He wanted, he'd missed me, he wanted to see me. He said, you know, just come for a week so we can be together. And at this time, I'm madly in love with him, still not realizing what he had been doing. Even though Daphne insisted she wasn't in on any scam, she immediately filed the claims on Jose's policy after returning to the United States. That's when insurance adjusters smelled a rat. The beneficiaries are saying, pay up. And the insurance company is saying, you haven't proved that your dad is dead. The only proof Jose died, this official looking Venezuelan death certificate. But suspicious insurance fraud investigators dove into the thick of the jungle in search of the truth. The first red flag that we had was the fact that Mr. Lantigua was an apparently a, an affluent individual, had actually traveled to Venezuela a country that was in, basically in a uh, civil war to obtain medical treatment. The clues Richard Marquez and his PIs found laid out like breadcrumbs in a fractured fairy tale. Another red flag that we, we noticed immediately was that he had allegedly passed away in a very small town in a remote location approximately two hours away from Caracas. And we thought that was very suspicious. Uh, once we arrived in the town, uh, we found out that he was allegedly staying at a lodge that had not been in operation for several years. Of course, Jose had no clue they were hot on the trail of his cold body. His forged death documents decomposing like a fake corpse in the humid Venezuelan heat. He dies in location A, and it's five days later is when he's cremated. A body in five days in the heat in Venezuela would not be a good sight. It would blow and it would smell. Investigators are told that Lantigua's body was driven 250 miles from where he supposedly died to a crematorium in another town. One more red flag given there were dozens of crematoriums closer. The cremation manager initially told us that he had in fact cremated the body. After a couple days of interview interviewing him and pointing out some discrepancies, he had no recourse but to tell the truth that uh, he had in fact never received the body, he had never in fact cremated the body, that he had swept the floor of some ashes and debris, put it in an urn and shipped it to the uh, family, to the wife. And then the first tangible clue that Jose Lantigua is in fact alive. Remember that death certificate? Investigators discover it was also fraudulent. It's identified somewhat easily by somebody that knows what they're looking for. And that's because they didn't have a notary process. There's a number on the documents and it has to correspond to a notary's book. They go to try to find where no the notary's book is. There isn't one. They start doing more interviews and what they're able to establish is he isn't dead. Jose's elaborate plan was about to topple like a house of cards. We can only hit people with one thing, the facts. And the facts never lie. The agents tracked down the doctor who signed the bogus death certificate. He threw us out of his office several times, but we kept going back and ultimately told us, hey, listen, okay, so the truth is, I never saw this person, I have never met him before, I never examined him, and the funeral home people, as a favor, asked me to sign the death certificate, but I have never met this person. Back in the States, Daphne says she was still haunted by the specter of the drug cartel. At this point, do you think that there are people following you? Oh, yeah. I was always so paranoid because he told me, you know, you got to watch out. Every time I'm driving, I'm looking in the mirrors thinking, is somebody following me? Meanwhile, attorneys from both sides were battling it out over the $8 million payout. They file a motion in federal court here in Jacksonville for a declaratory judgment finding that the insurance companies don't have to pay the insurance because he's not dead. They haven't provided sufficient proof of death. And so at that point in time, we know or have firm evidence, really, that he's not dead. Now the question is, 
where is he? But no one really knows where the fully alive, slippery scam artist is hiding. Coming up, Jose thinks he's pulled off the white collar crime of the century. And so the hunt was on. He makes a dreadful mistake. And what he does next will shock everyone. Daphne Simpson says she would do anything to protect her family. So when her husband, Jose Lentigua, told her they were in serious danger and he needed her help, she of course said yes, even though she knew some of the things she was doing might be illegal. Here's Anna Garcia. Chris, Jose Lantigua had a plot to make himself disappear, and he convinced everyone that it was real, including his wife and kids. Well, today they sit down to tell us just how far those lies went. Jose Lantigua is laying low in his secret hideaway in Venezuela. He went through quite a bit of trouble and pain, quite a few people who corroborated their story to show that he actually passed away. But now Jose's about to do something even more dramatic than rising from his own dead ashes. Apparently, Mr. Lantigua is an extremely convincing storyteller. By sneaking back into the United States. Lantigua then pays $5,000 to get a boat ride because it's just about 60 miles off the coast for Nassau across to Fort Lauderdale. He takes a Greyhound up I-95, comes to Jacksonville, stays at an airport hotel. The next morning, Daphne picks him up. Lantigua holes up in the couple's mountain retreat, nestled at the end of a long driveway hidden by tall pine trees. His children have no idea daddy's home. His wife, Daphne, did have family visit in that house in North Carolina at Christmas time and Thanksgiving. And he would stay at a hotel because he'd move out, so they didn't know he's alive. But Lantigua apparently did see trouble coming. Remember that panic room we told you about? It's a safe house, a safe room is what it was called. It was something he had insisted on having built into the house. The bunker in his basement was designed to withstand a nuclear attack. It was equipped with 20-inch thick steel doors. And something like that can come in handy when you're hiding. Which is interesting because this house was purchased on your honeymoon. Yeah. And he said he wanted to do renovations. He renovated the whole house, yes. So he was already planning, apparently. Jose then gets busy creating a new identity. He applies for a North Carolina driver's license using a stolen ID. But his next move to create a new life will be his last. He makes a dreadful mistake. He applies for the passport in the United States government. On his passport application, Jose uses the name of Ernest Wills, an African-American postal worker. But that was just the beginning of Jose's missteps. Jose actually listed the address of that mountain house in North Carolina and Daphne as the emergency contact. What, what turns out to be another dumb move. He had the Department of State on him, and they knew the passport was supposed to be delivered to a post office box in North Carolina. Though he changed his look for his passport picture, going from gray hair to a brown toupee and a fake goatee, it seems three mistakes was a charm. What had happened is Lantigua previously had a passport. He submits a passport again. Both of them were handwritten, same handwriting. Pictures come back and they match the faces because of the measurements between the nose and the eyes and the ears. And so the hunt was on. The feds run secret surveillance on Lantigua. And after a year and a half, they finally get their man. He had been having work done on his Jeep. And when we got to the place to pick up his Jeep, these agents were already there. And they got him, and they handcuffed him and arrested him. Jose Lantigua immediately confesses and confirms that he is Jose Lantigua. He was wearing a toupee. He had dyed his facial hair. The couple is immediately separated for questioning. One of the agents came over to me, and this whole time that this has been going on, he's always been telling me, I have to be this person. 
identity was supposedly the CIA had given him. So when the agent came and said, who is that? I did what he had told me to do. And I said, that's my friend. And I gave his name. And the agent looked at me and he said, I'm going to ask you again. I'm a federal agent. You can't lie. But I was so terrified and so thinking of protecting him and my family. I lied again. And that's when they arrested me. The evidence is overwhelming. Remember, his life insurance policy supposedly worth six million? It turns out he forged it. Jose really only had about $38,000. Jose and Daphne eventually both pleaded guilty. He's convicted of conspiracy and bank fraud. The judge sentenced him to 14 years in the pen. I think it was well-deserved. He will be in his 70s when he gets out of prison. He made a decision, he made a bed, and he's gonna have to sleep in it. And Daphne faced up to five years in jail for conspiracy. She wound up serving 17 months. But even while sitting in the slammer, Jose still had her under his spell. My family hired a lawyer to defend me. And I sat with him for three hours. And I told him everything. And he kept telling me, he said, Daphne, that's all a lie. You were duped. And I'm like, no, it's the truth. And you'll see because the government's going to expose it and tell the truth. It's all the truth. She was in there for months and believed wholeheartedly that her husband was telling the truth. And she was waiting every day for the CIA to come and fix it all. Do you blame her for having gotten herself in this position? You know, looking from the outside in, you're, you know, how could you be so naive? Why would you let this happen? You, you should have seen the signs. But being there and in the moment with him and how great of a con artist he was, he would have fooled anybody. Even though she served her time, Daphne remains under house arrest and must wear an ankle bracelet for three months. So Daphne, how far can you go outside? Just here, as far as I can go. She can leave only to go to church and hopes to find a job so she can somehow pay back the $871,000 Jose collected in insurance money. So now your mom is stuck with paying the restitution for both of them. Right, which I think is very unfair because even before she met Jose, my mom had a house, she had a home, she had vehicles, she had a career, she had her life together. Daphne is filing for divorce and refuses to answer the dozens of letters he has written to her from jail. It's just junk, it's just garbage in there. So that's when I started returning them and just saying, I don't want them. For what? To hear more lies? I lied to his wife as he did. That's nothing but cruel and barbaric because he turned her from being a person of good character to a person that's going to die as a felon. The ghost of Jose Lantigua finally busted. And as for Daphne, the fairy tale is broken. The glass slipper from her Prince Charming never fit. The fairy tale, <laughs> it doesn't exist.